I'm the Louisiana Quadling and welcome to my channel. On a previous video, a subscriber left this question. I would love to see what looks like a sawhorse figurine just over your shoulder in the bookcase. What is that? Sawhorse is one of my favorite characters and I feel like he doesn't get enough love in the merchandising area of things. Well... To answer your question, we've got to go back to the 90s. When my older sister and I were young, we started reenacting the Wish of Oz with our dolls for my parents. This was something that my mom thought was too cute not to record, so my dad got out our camcorder and the first home movies were created. This eventually turned into a hobby that my older sister, dad, and I did for the rest of my childhood. With each of the movies, we wanted to make them the best that we could, and with each one, we made improvements from the last one. And these improvements, as you might call them, started with my dad creating sets for some of the movies. Then we used different lighting techniques with colored lights. And then we added music to the movies. Sometimes my dad would even create music for some of them. And then later on, we got to the point where we didn't even want to show our hands in the movies. We wanted the dolls to move all by themselves. So we used different tricks like invisible string to achieve that. Now you have to remember that we were not recording on digital equipment, we were using analog videotape. And we recorded all of our home movies on these VHC tapes. And all of those elements that I talked about earlier, it all had to be done live. So we were really trying to push the limit of what we could with the very limited technology that we had at the time. But while we might have been limited technologically, we were also limited on what stories we could tell because of the dolls that we had. The only real Wizard of Oz Barbie-sized doll that I had growing up was my first Dorothy doll. You know, this really limits what Wizard of Oz stories you can tell. So my dad got an idea. Let's create some new dolls just for the movies. In April of 1999, we started working on our latest version of Return to Oz. And my dad wanted to create two new dolls for this movie, TikTok and The Gump. After trying a couple different techniques using clay to try and create TikTok, my dad eventually gave up resulting in TikTok being depicted as a bug in the movie. Sorry, TikTok. The Gump, however, was completed. During the summers, we would typically go to the beach in Biloxi, Mississippi, and during the summer of 1999 was when we got the Gump. There was a Toys R Us there in Biloxi. It, of course, has since closed. Um, there wasn't one here in my hometown, so you can only imagine what that was like, going to the beach and then going to a huge toy store. Anyways, that was where we picked up a moose that eventually became the Gump. He's, uh, it's, he's fairly simply put together. My dad just simply sawed off the head of the gump. This was originally a full-on moose and just glued him onto this piece of cardboard. In the movie, the gump was constructed with a sofa and an armchair that was tied together with twine. Overall, we were very satisfied with how the gump came out in Return to Oz. Our next and last movie that included new Wizard of Oz dolls was The Land of Oz, which started filming in July of 2000. 
At this point in our movie making, we started buying props for the movies. And the first scene in this movie shows Tip's workshop, where he starts constructing Jack Pumpkinhead. At the time, I was in Boy Scouts, and every summer going to summer camp, we would always drive through Hammond, Louisiana, and that was where a Hobby Lobby was located. We also didn't have one of those around. Anyways, that is where Jack Pumpkin's head's head and a lot of the props from that first scene were bought. Jack was constructed out of different materials. My dad wanted to base him off of the original illustrations that John Arneil did in The Marvelous Land of Oz. His torso was made out of ligustrum bushes right outside in our backyard, and his arms and legs are constructed out of pencils held together with nails. So that's why he can move. The only downside to his design is the fact that his legs are super duper weak. So if you wanted to recreate him, it might do you some good to just have his legs be stagnant. That way he can actually stand up, because poor Jack can't stand up. His clothes came from various different dolls that we had at the time, and the white shirt that he wears in the movie disappeared at some point after 2005, so that's why he doesn't have it now. The googly eyes were added to Jack's eyes, so that you could see that he had come to life after Mombi brings him to life using the powder of life in the movie. While of course Jack Pumpkin had never had eyeballs in the original books, I always thought it made this doll look really, really cute. The cracking on Jack's head is unfortunately a result of where he was on display for years. Too much sun and too much heat. I've thought about replacing his head, and I've actually bought some other pumpkin heads, but honestly, I just don't ever want to touch him. And if I do use the other pumpkins that I've bought, I'll probably just create a second Jack pumpkin head. And the last doll, and the one that sparked this whole video, is the sawhorse. I do agree with you that the sawhorse doesn't get a lot of love. And that's really a shame, because he's so stinkin' cute. Like Jack Pumpkinhead, the sawhorse was made from our ligustrum bushes that were outside in our backyard. And if you've never cut ligustrum before, it's a fairly soft wood. So the mouth that's been cut out here wasn't too difficult to cut out when this was originally chopped off of one of our bushes. Of course, now that it's been some time later, <laughs> yeah, the wood has hardened quite a bit. We added googly eyes to him so that you could see that he had come to life. The only thing that we unfortunately forgot to add to him were ears. The poor thing's deaf. And if I was to ever add ears, I would probably just make a whole second one because I just, you know, there's some things you just don't want to touch. It's kind of like Dorothy with the, um, with her body and the way that she was put back together by my grandmother. I just don't ever want to touch her either. And speaking of my grandmother, The Land of Oz was her favorite movie that we made. And it's such a shame that we never finished it. Now, I have to stop myself right there because I could keep on talking about our home movies for like, you know, the next like week. So, yeah. And of course, if you'd like to see our home movies, you can. I have a second channel called Kid Film Studios, link down below in the description where you can see most of our home movies. And if you have any questions at all about them, please leave them down below. Unfortunately, you can't leave comments on the actual videos as YouTube wanted me to, you know, designate them as made for kids. And with any video that's made for kids, 
you unfortunately cannot leave a comment on it. So if you have any questions about any of our movies, be sure to leave them down below on this video. Do you make custom Wizard of Oz dolls? Did you make home movies with your dolls when you were a kid? Comment down below. And if you liked that video, please give it a thumbs up, comment down below, and subscribe. New videos are posted every two weeks on the 15th and last day of each month. And if that doesn't satisfy your appetite for Oz, follow the link in the description to ozclub.org and join the International Wizard of Oz Club. Until next time, bye y'all.